batters ready. There they go. There goes our men's category two threes. What is up guys? I'm getting hyped up for the 2024 season and realizing I got a lot of race footage from 2023 that I never went back through. I had some injuries early in the year. So last year I kind of went zero to 60 like from just riding the trainer all the time straight into Noonan Crit, which I've got a video about was my first race. Straight from that into Speed Week and straight from Speed Week into this race. This is the Sunny King Crit, which is the closest like big national race to me in Birmingham. This is in Anniston, Alabama. So this was a big goal for the team last year, and you can see I'm pretty excited about that goal. I got a good clip in and started. I think I've got like cyclocross brain where if I get a good clip in, I just kind of go to the front and rip it. I did the same thing at Athens Twilight, which I will also be making a video about. Maybe not the most tactically savvy move, but I did want to go to the front early and just establish like, hey, Skyway Domestique is in control of this race. And spoiler alert for the rest of this video, we did control this race. We had a plan and I feel like we executed it really, really well. So the plan for the majority of this race wasn't super specific. We were really just looking for anything with more than two riders in it. If we didn't have somebody there, we wanted to drag it back pretty fast. Anything that was one or two riders, if they started to get about half a lap up, we would start really chasing hard. Other than that, we were looking for open doors we could attack through anytime it slows down and also any free ride we could get off the front like the one I am taking right here. Not exactly a free ride at 600 watts, but I had some good momentum. I could tell this guy was winding it up and this was a good place to get some separation. And now we have someone in this move, we don't have to chase it back. I think we had three guys here and we had decent separation. I rotated with him for a minute, but it all came back together. Here's another example from about 15 minutes into the race. There was one rider up the road solo and we're about to kind of get in contact with him. We're in spitting distance here. And as things start to kind of fan out across the road, as we have that rider in sight, a couple of guys start to wind it up to counterattack, And I'm just gonna attack on that because I see it happening. I got the correct line to do it. And yeah, again, like 800 watts up the start straight but this was a good snappy attack and I wanted to be a part of it speaking of those open doors Alex finds a beautiful one here on the left so this entire start straight from corner four to corner one is basically uphill it probably averages two percent it says five right now it's not really five at any point that's just Garmin uh, overshooting it a little bit, but it probably does average two, three. It's enough that when it slows down, if you snap there, you can get pretty good separation. So this course is a simple rectangle and basically four to one is uphill, flat from one to two, downhill from two to three, and flat again from three to four. This race was a little later on the calendar than it normally is. It was about a week after Speed Week and you could kind of sense that a lot of the guys from the Southeast had really burned a lot of matches at Speed Week. I only did four four, I believe, of the seven races, and coming off of zero racing, that was exactly as much as I needed to kind of get my head back around, riding a crit efficiently, taking the corners well, all that kind of stuff. I say all that to say we started with a kind of small field for this race. Everybody was a little ragged, and with pretty constant attacking, we were shedding people off the back the whole time. Having said all that, I really want to drill down on the last six laps of this race, because that's where we had a very specific plan, and things really started to come together. So, in the finale of this race, things generally slow up at some point. There's that moment where everyone sort of gives up on a breakaway and starts thinking about the sprint. And when that happens and nobody wants to pull, it slows down and there's a big opportunity. So we wanted Zach to be on the lookout for that to launch a solo flyer, which you have just seen him do here. This is, we've either just seen six to go or we're about to see six to go, but Zach does an amazing job of reading the race and choosing his moment there. He goes at a time where he doesn't have to put in a huge dig to get separation. He can sort of lock into his effort and, and do something he knows he can sustain. Here we are a little over a lap later and Zach's gap is looking really good. Now what this does, this is not just a suicide attack by Zach where he's calling his day, especially in a reduced field like this where no one has a lot of teammates left. This could be the move of the day. All it takes is every individual rider here thinking, uh, maybe I don't want to chase this one. I'm saving my legs for the sprint. Zach commits to this move and it's gone. If that happens, Zach wins the race solo, which is awesome. And if not, it's taken the pressure off me and Alex to ever hit the wind chasing, but also ensuring that it's going to stay fast as you're seeing right here. And, and all of these riders that are making it fast are burning their legs close enough to the sprint that they're probably not going to be able to recover. So 
it's kind of taking some of the most motivated guys, some of the guys who feel like they could maybe win this race and are very motivated to win this race, taking them and blunting their legs right before the finale, which is exactly what we want. Unfortunately, Zach's move is brought back here. I actually think this is the beginning of him leveling up, though, and 24 is going to be his absolutely his season. He's able to get back on the back, get a little rest, and then go back to the front and give us one more turn going into the last lap right here. So Alex is our designated sprinter here. It's a little bit of an uphill sprint, and Alex is a really small guy with a gigantic kick. Like, he can probably hit, I don't know, 16 watts a kilo, probably do 15 watts a kilo for 15 seconds or something. So an uphill drag like this is a perfect opportunity for him. And I have done this race a bunch of times, navigated this finale a bunch of times. So I told Alex, get on my wheel in the finale, and I will get you to the last corner. I sense that Zach is starting to fade a little bit here, so I'm going to keep it fast to make sure we don't get swarmed. I'm going to the front here. I get on the front, and then I take a look back, and you can see me make eye contact with Alex here. There's Alex. Get on my wheel. Alex gets on my wheel. All right, he's there. Time to go. This is one of those moments that never happens in bike racing. We made a plan, and all of it has happened. We wanted Zach to take that flyer. He took the flyer. That took the pressure off us. Alex and I got good position. I was able to go to the front. I'm kind of like pinching myself at this point, like, this, this is really happening. We're, we're about to do this. One potentially valid criticism of what we're doing here is that Alex is a little too far forward. You probably don't want to be first into the final corner to win the sprint. But I'll say I've tried the opposite many times, which is coming in, you know, fifth wheel or something and either had someone run wide on me and I don't get a clean exit, gotten chopped, just been between two people that don't really sprint and been boxed in. So my only concern was to make sure that Alex had a clean run at the line from the last corner. So you can see this guy in the red is trying to come up the outside and I punch it just enough to keep him behind us or at least alongside. Watch what I do coming out of this last corner though. I can feel him coming up on my right side and I know what he's gonna do. I get fully in front of him and I open the door for Alex on the inside. I yelled inside go and flick my elbow to let Alex know which way to come around. And he unleashes an absolutely monster sprint. This thing is so long and he manages to hold all of these guys off except for the blue helmet in the yellow Mac jersey comes around him on the right side. So that is Alex second in the 2-3 race at Sunny King, a massive result for our team. So psyched on this. It's an amazing feeling for everyone to be working together on the team, doing exactly what they're supposed to do and just like fully trusting each other. Oftentimes, even with that trust and that camaraderie and that skill, another team's tactic just doesn't mesh with yours. Uh, one of your guys gets a flat, somebody ends up on the wrong side of a split. It's just so rare that everything comes together on a day like this. I pop a little wheelie across the finish line there. Yeah, so psyched to get back into it and do some racing in 24 with these guys. I will be getting out there the next two weekends actually, so thanks for watching and hope to see you guys out there.